Hey, Blender Bob here. I always try to show you stuff you will never find anywhere else or bring a different approach to it. And this time I'm gonna blow your mind. For this entire clip, I only rendered a single frame. And to render the entire clip, it took about 35 seconds on my crappy machine. <laughs> I told you I would blow your mind. If you ever learned at school that the primary colors are yellow, red and blue, well, this is totally wrong. They are actually magenta, cyan and yellow. Red is actually a mix of yellow and magenta. But this is for pigments, if you mix color together. It's called subtractive synthesis because pigments actually absorb color. So you start with a white light and it absorbs color and it absorbs the light energy. That's why black surfaces are warmer in the sun than white. In 3D is the complete opposite. We start with black and we add light. That's why it's called the additive synthesis. So if you mix a blue light with a red light, you will get a magenta result. And if you make a Christmas scene and you light everything in red and green, well, don't be surprised if everything turns out yellow. But the point of all this for this exercise is that light adds on top of each other. Okay, so let's take the monster. There are three lights in the scene. One is red, one is blue and one is green. They could have been any colors, it's just for the purpose of this exercise. If we look at the lights individually, this is what it looks like. The red, the green and the blue. Now what I did was to remove all the colors from the light and render each light separately. And this is how you set it up. It's quite simple. Actually, you just create a collection for every light in your scene. Then you create render layers and in each render layer you will have one light turned on. So layer spotlight 1 only has spotlight 1 on and layer spotlight 2 only has spotlight 2 on and it goes on like this. Now we're gonna add the color back into the compositing and it's quite simple. You create an RGB node, you put it red and then you create a mix node, you put it in multiply and you multiply them together and you get the exact same result. You do the same thing for the green light and for the blue light. Now we've just learned that lights add on top of each other. So let's add the red and the green together and then combine this result with the blue. And look at this. The result is we get the exact same thing as the original image we had to begin with. And you lose absolutely zero quality when you do this. Now the cool thing is I use RGB but I can change the colors of my spot anytime I want in compositing and I get a very very fast result. And the cool thing is that it works both ways. I could pick some colors in the compositing and instead put them in the lights, the real lights and render it and I'm gonna get the exact same result as what I got in the comp. And this is how I managed to do the sequence we saw at the beginning. I had all my rendered layers, I created RGB nodes that I multiplied with each layer and then added them all together and I get this result. And now I have total control on the lighting. I can do whatever I want. I can turn some lights on, some lights off, I can change the color of the lights, I can change intensity, I could change the gamma of the lights if I want to, which is not really possible in real life. And then you just need to adjust all the colors the way you want them and play with the intensities and you can keyframe all that stuff and that's how you create the sequence I showed you at the beginning. This is the same setup in Nuke. You can see it's much more compact. That's because the way Nuke works. The nodes themselves, they only have connections. They're just little boxes. But all the attributes are on the side. When you double click on it, you can see all the attributes appearing here instead of having it on the node directly. Also, the grade node that I'm using has a lot of attributes, black point, white point, lift, gain, multiply, offset, gamma, it's all in the same node. And if I wanted to redo this in Blender, I would have a gigantic network and would be unusable. And this is the same thing in Natron. Natron is a copycat of uh, Nuke. It's open source, it's free, it's not that stable, but it does the exact same work. And it's actually faster than Nuke for this. Now the first time I used this technique was on Final Destination 3. There's this roller coaster scene and one of the scenes was completely rendered and it took forever to render. It was like 20 minutes per frame and the scene took like 4 days to render. I don't know, it took forever. And the VFX soup asked me to put an orange light and a blue light on the entire roller coaster. And I didn't want to re-render the entire thing and I knew that this guy was picky. It was like, you know, put 2% more science and stuff that you can barely tell. So that's what I did. I rendered one spot in white, intensity of one, same thing for the other side. And then in comp, I multiplied the color and put it in additive on what was already rendered. And we saved a lot of time doing this. We didn't have to re-render everything. And at the time, it's not like today where you, do, you, know, you change something and you see the refresh live on your screen. It took 20 minutes 
per frame. So imagine you make a change, you try something, poof, now you have, 20, you have to wait 20 minutes to see the result. Well, that's three tests per hour. So you save a lot of time by doing this in comp. Now, don't you ever, ever flicker a light in the CG scene. Always do it in comp because if the CG supervisor, the director, the art director, whatever, they come and they say, you know what, make the flickering a little bit faster. You have to re-render the entire thing. If you ever give me a scene where you flicker a light in the 3D scene, and if you've been following this channel, you know what's gonna happen. Tell me in the comments what's gonna happen if you do this. This is a simple real life example of lighting in comp. So this is the setup in Blender. We had the bird on a motion path. We had three lights in there. There was a light from the windows, an ambient light, and a light that comes from the environment. Since I didn't have an HDRI for the shot, what I did is I took the plate and I used it as an HDRI. So this way I would get the same color balance. Three passes, the fake HDRI. The second one is an ambient just to fill the shadows. And the third one is the light from the windows. This is the setup for the comp, it's really simple. We start with the plate and then we add our three layers on top of each other. They all have a grade node to change them, to adjust them. The first one is mixed as over instead of uh, addition because otherwise it would be just transparent. At the end there's a little blurred node because everything is too sharp when it comes out of CG, so always blur your stuff. You can see what it does here when I adjust the light in comp. Here I can add more or less light coming from the window. After making all the adjustments, I add the blur node because everything that comes from CG is too sharp, a little saturation, and a light wrap. Light wrap will just wrap the light around the object and make it feel more integrated when you have very strong light source in the background. After this, I pre-multiply it and I put it over the background. But wait a minute, didn't we have the background already in the back? We did, but look what happens if I disconnect it. Now I get this fringe around the bird and it looks pretty bad. So, simple solution, you comp it on the plate and then you recomp it on the same plate. I'm not a professional compositor, maybe there's a better way to do it, but this is how I do it. This is not the original comp, by the way, this is something I just set up for this demo, because uh, after this there's a few steps to integrate the bird even more with the colors and uh, matching the blacks and all this stuff. I'm not done yet, there's another technique we can use to relight stuff in comp. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, it's not something that we use all the time, but when we use it, it's only to create like little rim lights or little highlights here and there that compositors will do directly in compositing without having to go send the scene back to 3D, relight it and re-render it. I'm not gonna go in details on how to do this in Nuke because this is Blender Bob, not uh, Nuke Bob, but uh, I just wanna show you that it's possible. This is a completely black image. It has two layers. One is a normal pass and the other one is a point position pass and you can light this image. There's nothing on it, but you can light it. It's really cool. And you can also create a point cloud from this image that will give you a 3D representation of where stuff is in 3D space. Unfortunately, that doesn't work very well with Blender because Blender is Z up and all the other software are working Y up and all the colors and normals, everything is inverted. You need to swap them and still it doesn't work very well. Blender Institute, please give us the possibility to work Y up. Nobody works Z up except 3D Max. Everybody else is working Y up and it makes much more sense. Please give us the possibility to switch from one to another. It's nice, huh? You start from a 2D image and you create a 3D geometry inside your compositing package. So the barbershop was a little bit extreme. I mean, there's like 15 lights in there. This is not something you do all the time, but it's just to show you how powerful the technique is. And I would never render all these passes with white lights and give it to a compositor and say, well, deal with it. You do the lighting. Of course not. I'm the 3D guy. That's my job. I do the lighting. So I would do a pre-comp and then I would give it to them and they can tweak and adjust it as needed. Very soon I will be able to show you a very good example we did on the movie Clouds that's going to be released on uh, Disney+. Plus. Uh, the trailer is out, uh, but the movie's not out yet. As soon as it's out, I should be able to show you a lot of cool stuff we did on that movie. And that's it for this week. I'm also on Facebook. Just search for Blender Bob. So if you have any questions, we can chat. It's going to be easier this way than the YouTube comments. Uh, the YouTube comments, I'm trying to answer everybody, but I'm getting lost. There's just too many and you know, replies from old clips I did before and replies of replies and replies of replies. And uh, so if I don't answer your comment, I'm sorry. It's just because I'm completely lost. Okay. All right. See you next week. Probably. Bye. This is a Vulcan. 
this is a dyslexic Vulcan. 